Stay tuned. Yes, welcome back. It's another episode of that time of the month show, so you know why we're here. I know why I'm here. Let's get on with our review, facts, and mythos is on the 2010 remake of The Wolfman. So The Wolfman 2010 is based on the 1941 movie of the same name, this one directed by Joe Johnson, starring Benicio Del Toro, Anthony Hopkins, Emily Blunt, and Hugo Weaving, so Lawrence Talbot returns to his estate after his brother's death, only to find that there is a werewolf amongst them, and of course, who is this werewolf until Larry Talbot is attacked? And he then turns into a werewolf in the light of the full moon, but with the help of his brother's fiance, played by Emily Blunt, and a chief inspector, Hugo Weaving, on the case for a murder, believing it's a lunatic. And we find out that the one responsible for it all is Lawrence's father, who is the werewolf that's caused all this bother and turned Lawrence into a beast. And, of course, they, we get some supernatural horror in there, some action, and some drama. So what did I like about this? Well, I liked that this was pretty much the Wolfman given the 21st century treatment. It was released theatrically, and I have to say, one of those rare remakes that I do actually prefer over the original. I mean, yes, the effects were not practical because, well, it's the 21st century. We're all around about CGI these days. But I did like the look of the Wolfman, the physical appearance and the transformation sequences were a lot more modern. Of course it's a painful process, I mean, when I used to turn on a full moon, yeah, I felt the pain all the time before the werewolf took over. But like I said, I'm one with the wolf now. I'm in the driver's seat and the wolf gets to be out all the time. Anyhow, yes. Um, so yeah. I do like the CGI effects in this, and some of the and the score and the cinematography, and it's quite fast-paced. We get at least three good long sequences of this werewolf form, and I do like the finale that they have in the big brawl between father and son fighting, and of course, it is quite entertaining, and it's also done in a bigger budget. It has a good cast too, which has Benicio Del Toro, Anthony Hopkins, Odin, uh, Emily Blunt, and Hugo Weaving, Red Skull. Yes, it's a decent remake and I do enjoy it. It's a fun film and it runs, I think, for under two hours, which is a good length of time. And, you know... It's a fun one. Of course, there are some dislikes, such as sometimes there are real drama in there, there is slow build tension in there, which I didn't feel was necessary, but they, I guess they had to put it in for entertainment purposes. But I also noticed that there were some deleted scenes in this movie which they cut, which I have seen and I do like and think, damn, why do they cut that out of the movie, like when he's invading a party or... You know, there's even like three alternate endings that I know of to this one. But all in all, The Wolfman 2010 is a decent remake, and this film flopped when it first came out. Yeah, it got crapped on, it didn't do well in the box office, but I like to think it's at least got some cult status or something. Anyway, ratings, what am I gonna give this one? Hmm. You know what, I do enjoy it, I'll give it four and a half full moons out of five. So there you go. That is the review on The Wolfman 2010. So, let's get to our next part of the show, our facts and mythoses. Let's do it.
the mythology in this werewolf movie, The Wolfman 2010, follows pretty much similar rules to the 1941 original, where the transformation is activated by the light of the full moon. The werewolf also appears taller and more muscular, with wolf-like features in the face and fur and hair all over with claws and wolf-like feet. The weakness, of course, is silver bullets still, but also can be killed by the, ha the hand of another werewolf as well as we do see in the movie when Lawrence decapitates his father after he burns. The transformation is also a painful process as bones break and skin tears and the whole body physically transforms. The bear owned by the gypsies in the movie was actually recycled animation from the 2007 movie The Golden Compass, only it was changed from a polar bear to a grizzly bear. Hugo Weaving based his character off real police inspector from Scotland Yard, Frederick Abilene, who was the investigator on the Jack the Ripper murders. Benicio Del Toro's werewolf makeup took approximately three hours to apply and one hour to remove. Danny Elfman was originally meant to compose the movie and record a complete score inspired by the score from Bram Stoker's Dracula, but it was rejected as it did not fit the new tone of the movie after several reshoots and delays. Paul Helsinger was it supposed to replace him, but Universal pulled the plug on that and decided to reinstate Elfman's gothic score. The director's cut begins with the Universal Pictures logo that was being used when the 1941 Wolfman came out, but the original fanfare theme is not heard. No matter what Lawrence was wearing previously, the Wolfman always wore the same clothes post-transformation. That was the case in the 1941 original as well. And there you have some facts that you may or may not have known about the 2010 Wolfman. Well, that's it. That's all we got time for this month. Have you seen the Wolfman 2010? Do you know anything or learn anything about this one? Let us know down in the comments below and if you like this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends and feel free to subscribe to the official Random Horror YouTube channel if you haven't already. I've been your host Gordon the Werewolf and this has been That Time of the Month Show. So until next time, don't have nightmares.